हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल मास्टर मरीना रमेत सांगवान ऑन यूट्यूब बेसिकली इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी व्हाट इज डेक्लेरेशन ऑफ सिक्योरिटी एंड व्हाई दिस डेक्लेरेशन ऑफ सिक्योरिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड नाउ एवरीबॉडी इज अवेयर नाउ दैट मर्चेंट शिप्स आर एट अ वेरी हाई रिस्क ऑफ सिक्योरिटी थ्रेट्स एंड सिक्योरिटी इंसिडेंट्स फ्रॉम हैपनिंग यू हैव पायरेसी नाउ डेज you have terrorism and you have theft pilferage and all sorts of uh, threats to the security of the ships so that is why we had something called as the ISPS code and you must be familiar with the ISPS code by now now as per this IM, ISPS code every ship is required to have a ship security plan every port facility is required to have a port facility security plan and as per this uh, ISPS code only you need to fill up and you need to complete this declaration of security so what are the uh, incidences where you require to complete this declaration of security we will see that and how you are going to complete it so what is declaration of security the contracting government shall determine when a declaration of security is required by assessing the risk the ship port interface or ship to ship activity poses to persons property of the environment so basically it is the contracting government who shall determine when this declaration of security is required and who is a contracting government basically these are the governments and these are the countries who have ratified this ISPS code so they have to determine when this declaration of security has to be completed on their port facilities and on the ships registered under their flag main purpose of declaration of security is to ensure agreement is reached between the ship and the port facility or with other ships with which it interfaces as to the respective security measures each will undertake in accordance with the provisions of their respective approved security plans so as we have discussed all port facilities and all ship uh, ships need to have a ship security plan and the main purpose of this declaration is reaching an agreement that is an agreement between the ship and the port and uh, or between a ship and another ship if they are going to be engaged into a ship to ship activity so this declaration of uh, security is signed or basically this agreement is signed so as to make sure that they are taking adequate security measures to mitigate any security threat or any security incident from happening now a ship can request completion of declaration of security when if you are on a ship and you can request a completion of declaration uh, declaration of security in this uh, five incidences that is one when the ship is operating at a higher security level than the port facility or another ship it is interfacing with so if you are operating at a higher security level and the port security level is lesser than your security level or another ship is there whose security level is lesser than your security level then you may need to fill this declaration of security second there is an agreement on declaration of security between contracting governments covering certain international voyages or specific ships or those voyages so if your contracting government requires you to fill this declaration of security if uh, your ship is that specific ship which is covered by that uh, by those international voyages as covered by that agreement by your uh, contracting state basically that is your flag state then you may need to fill this declaration of security and there has been a security threat or a security incident involving the ship or involving the port facility as applicable so if there has been a previous security threat or a security incident has happened on the ship on either the ship or the port then you may need to fill this declaration of security fourth is the ship is at a port which is not required to have an implement an approved port facility security plan so if you are going in a port where the port is not required to have a port facility security plan then you need to fill this declaration of security and fifth is the ship is conducting ship to ship activities with another ship not required to have an implement an approved security ship security plan so if you are carrying out carrying out an sts activity then that can be anything loading discharging bunkering whatever activity you are carrying out and if that other ship is not required to have a ship security plan then you have to fill this declaration of security now the request for the completion of declaration of security has to be acknowledged by the port facility or the ship whichever facility can request this completion of declaration of security and the person responsible on the other facility has to acknowledge it that is on the ship the master or the ship security officer or basically on behalf of the ship and on the port facility 
basically the port facility security officer or it can be any other officer or authority as decided by the contracting government. Now, the declaration of security shall address the security requirements that could be shared between a port facility and a ship or between ships and shall state the responsibility for each. Contracting governments shall specify the minimum period for which declaration of security shall be kept by the port facilities located within their territory. Administrations shall specify the minimum period for which declaration of security shall be kept by ships entitled to fly the flag. So basically it is your flag state and the contracting government in case of a port facility who's going to decide for how long this declaration of security that record has to be kept on board the ship or in the port facility. Now, this is a uh, general generic form of declaration of security. The declaration of security between ship and a port facility, it can be between a ship and another ship. Okay, so this is what we have to see here, how to fill this up, how to agree or how to reach the agreement between the ship and the shore. So basically you write here your ship's name, whatever is your ship's name. I am a number of the ship, name of the port facility, and this declaration of security will be valid from what time to what time basically it will be valid from your arrival to your departure then for whatever what activities it will be valid for it will be valid for basically all the activities which you are going to carry out when you are alongside other ship or when you are in that port basically embarkation of authorized personnel uh, embarkation of crew members disembarkation of crew members receiving of stores or cargo discharging loading or bunkering operations Okay. These are the activities which you are going to carry out in the sport. And then here you have to mention the security level of your ship and the security level of the port. Basically, they have to be at the same level. If any one of them is at a higher level, the one then the one which is at a lower level has to change their security level to a higher level. They have to inform to their flag state, their, to their company security officer, and they have to uh, change to a higher security level. And the same has to be recorded in your security file. These are the activities or basically a checklist and who will be carrying out what duties in these activities. So basically, first is ensuring the performance of all security duties. So the port facility will ensure that the security duties are performed on the port facility and the ship will ensure that it is carried out on the ship. So basically both are going to sign here. Then monitoring restricted areas to ensure that only authorized personnel have access. So both are going to monitor their respective restricted areas. So port facility and ship uh, facility both are going to sign. Now, what are restricted areas? Basically, these are restricted areas are identified when the ship security assessment is carried out. The ship security assessment is carried out prior to making the ship security plan. Okay. So all these restricted areas are identified. They are mentioned in the ship security plan and the port facility security plan. And both the port and the ship has to make sure that only authorized personnel are allowed into these restricted areas. So both have to agree upon it. Controlling access to the port facility, basically the port has to agree to it because the ship cannot access control to the port facility. Controlling access to the ship, the port will not be controlling access to the ship. They, the ship has to control the access. The ship is going to sign here. The port is not going to sign here. So we just idea not applicable for the port. Then monitoring of the port facility, including berthing areas and areas surrounding the ship. So basically both the port and the ship are going to maintain this security patrol or security watch. So both are going to sign here. Monitoring of the ship, including berthing areas and areas surrounding the ship. So both are going to do this. So both the port facility and the ship's facility are going to sign here. Handling of cargo, both are handling the cargo. So both are going to sign here. Delivery of ship's stores. So both are going to sign here because ship stores are going to be handled by both the port facility and the ship facility because they will be passing through the port facility. Handling of the unaccompanied baggage, special measures have to be taken to handle this unaccompanied baggage, whether it is on the port, uh, port facility side or whether it is on the ship. So these measures have to be discussed upon before the operations are being carried out. Controlling the embarkation of persons and the effect, both are going to maintain and take measures for this. Ensuring the security communication is readily available between the ship and the port facility. So a dedicated channel on the VHF or a telephone number or something uh, has to be kept ready on which communication can be carried out between the port facility security officer and the ship security officer. So this is continuous. The affixing of the initials of the ship security officer or the port facility security officer under these columns indicate that the activity will be done in accordance with the relevant approved plan. So whatever 
if you have signed here then it means that the activity will be carried out and the measure security measure will be taken in accordance with your approved ship security plan the signatories to this agreement certify that security measures and arrangements for both the port facility and the ship during the specified activities meet the provisions of chapter 11 part 2 and part a of the code that will be implemented in accordance with the provisions already stipulated in their approved plan or the specific arrangements agreed to and set out in the attached annexure that means your ship security plan and the port facility security plan are made in accordance with chapter 11 part 2 of solas and part a of the ispas code and whatever measures and security measures and arrangements are given there in their approved ship security plan you have to follow those security measures while you are carrying out these activities then you have to dated at what time and at what place you have to just write here then signatures have to be put signatures for on behalf of the ship signature on behalf of the port facility name of the person who is signing on the ship name of the person who is signing on the port facility title of the person it can be the sso it can be the master and similarly the title of the person who is signing on behalf of the port facility and here in the last column are the contact details basically for the port facility port facility contact details port facility security officer contact details and any other contact details for the ship master's contact details ship security officer contact details company uh, contact details and company security officer contact details this contact details such be such at be such uh, it should be such that it is continuously available that whenever required the port facility and the ship facility can communicate with each other on issues related to the security gentlemen we have to understand here that security is a big issue now and every anywhere or everywhere we go there's threats are always there so that is why it is all the more important now this video will basically be very useful for second mates uh, who want uh, who are going for their mates promotions because uh, mostly on most of the ships the chief officer are also the ship security officers depending upon company to company on some ships it is the master or the chief engineer who can also be the ship security officer but mostly most of the ships you will find that it is the chief officer who is also responsible for the security of the ship he is also the ship security officer else it will be very important and it will be very useful for the cadets who are going to for their second mates exams who are not really very aware of this declaration of security there are a lot of questions being asked and during your oral uh, exams in this declaration of security so watch this video carefully gentlemen and share it with your friends also please subscribe the channel i hope this video will be useful to you and uh, if you find it useful then share it with your friends uh, thanks for watching the video thank you a lot